Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode here in Devil Dagger. Uh, in between episodes, I set up some of the designations for our work rooms. Uh, not very much in the blacksmith area, but that's because I'm not entirely sure how I want things to look in there just yet. Um, so I only did the areas underneath the workshops. Um, I also set up the masonry workroom, <laughs> but this time I didn't put the designation under the middle tile. That way our gnomes can actually still create the blocks that we need for these uh, replacement tasks. But today I thought that it would be a good idea to go ahead and start setting up this area. Um, I won't be setting up the farms just yet because like I said in the last one I don't want the food stocks to go too high uh, I would prefer to try and keep them a little bit lower uh, they're starting to creep up there quite a bit so we're gonna go ahead and just leave them as is right now but we can go ahead and set up the pastures for our yaks and for any additional animals that we think we might be getting. So I think a good place to start would be the yaks. So we'll go ahead and clear these trees here. Get them out of the way. And hopefully somebody will come along pretty soon and take care of that. Oh, yep. Here comes our lumberjack now. What is our lumberjack's name? Mazas Pixidus. Well, that's a very uh, epic sounding name. Mazas Pixidus. And we have another bear. Mm. Your brethren took one of my gnomes. I do not approve of this. One day our gnomes will be outfitted with gear and we will take on all of the forces of Mother Nature. Wind, rain, sleet, and snow. It doesn't matter. Speaking of snow, it's actually pretty cold here in my hometown. Uh, I don't know what what's up with the weather. I realize that it's November, but this weather has gone from hot to cold in the matter of just a couple of days, and it's been pretty brutal. Uh, Everybody that I talk to just walking down the street, they're just like, you want to do something about this weather? Because it's gotten a bit ridiculous. And I mean, honestly, like I went from wearing a uh, t-shirt and gym shorts when I was just bumming around the house to having to wear full pants with a t-shirt, sometimes a jacket, if not a sweatshirt. So it's it's been pretty crazy. But uh, there's actually a gnome or uh, not a gnome, a mod called Nemoria Seasons or Nemoria Worlds that the that was made available prior to the inclusion of mod support for this game, and it adds a little bit of flair to the game. Um, the author is trying to create it in the same way that the rest of the mods have been created. Um, from what I understand. The author is having a little bit of trouble uh, converting the original mod over to the way that mods are currently being created, but hopefully that'll take care of itself and we can start getting some seasons in our kingdom, because once that is actually available in the Steam Workshop, I will be including it in this Let's Play. Um, I can't quite remember if it adds any kind of textures in terms of how statues or pillars look. It's been a little while since I messed around with it, but it it really is a very nice looking mod. It, it changes the colors of the trees and the grass. Uh, during the winter time, you see snow on the ground, you'll see snow on your yaks, your gnomes will change clothing, they'll start wearing hoods and such. It's it's a very nice mod in my opinion. Alright, so our area has been cleared here, so let's go ahead and set up the pasture. Um, I would like a fence around our yaks, so go ahead and put it like this. And how many 
I forget how many tiles one yak needs. Each animal needs 12 tiles per. So if we wanted... Oh, we got some strawberries in the way as well. So let's go ahead and move those. The yaks are the biggest animal in the game. Um, with 12 tiles apiece, so... It's gonna... If, if we wanted to do it, I guess, the most appropriate way to get 12 yaks, we would need something like that. Um, I think 12 yaks is pretty... That's, that's a lot of yaks to have to feed and take care of, so I'm, I think I'm gonna drop it down to 10. Um, I would need 120 spaces, that's 110 there. Um, hmm, we might be able to create some kind of an interesting shape, so let's see here, that's 77, that's 84, um, and we need 120, so we would need, what, 26, no, 16 would be 100, so 36 more tiles. I can work with that. And then six here. Yeah, let's do that. That should be 120. Yep, that is 120. Excellent. So our first pasture is all set up. Um, might be a good... But I do want a fence around it, so... Go ahead and set up our rail fence. And we'll use pine planks because that is definitely the one that we have the most for. Unfortunately, you can't hold and click to create these. So you have to click each individual rail post, which is a major pain. It's so annoying in my opinion. RoboBob, if you see this video, please, if there's any way for you to get the ability to just click and drag the rail posts, that would be awesome. And how far out does this go? So, it needs to go there. And unfortunately, there there are no wooden gates for the um, fence posts. So, if you actually want access to anything, you have to either A, get really creative with how you build it, which I think is how we're going to approach it. Or B, you just have to leave an empty spot. Um, which is a bit unfortunate, honestly. Oh, and I just realized that that is going to mess up. Because it's going to try and connect to the wall there. And it is going to look really dumb. Alright, so what we will do is we will cancel these jobs. And... Uh, at least that'll save on a bit of wood. So that's nice, I guess. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it means that we're not optimizing all of our space here. So I need it to go here and run along this way. And I think we want our entrance to be... Ugh, oh, it's also doing it over here, which is a bit annoying. Uh well, we'll go ahead and deconstruct these two, because we, we just don't need it, honestly. Um, you know what? We don't need any of this either. I think, yeah, I, I definitely didn't plan this very well, unfortunately, so we'll go ahead and include all of that, we'll include that, that, and that'll be one, two, three, four, five additional tiles. And how many is that right now? So that's 137. And plus five would be 142. <laughs> We're actually two off from having the ability to make, uh, or to have 12 yaks. So if I went here, and then here, 
I could actually have a hundred and or I could have 144 tiles and have 12 yaks. So, yeah, why not? Uh, man, just poor planning on my part. I do apologize for that, guys. But uh, this is this is what happens when you play a game like this that involves a lot of planning, and when you're trying to do a series on it. Uh, you get to see my indecision live, which. Thank the good lord that we do not have to listen to me do a voiceover anymore. I, I, I do apologize for those episodes of voiceover episodes are really painful for me. I, I can't stand voiceovers for the most part. They, they're incredibly boring to me um, because you don't get the honest reactions of people as they're playing the game, which in my opinion is some of the best parts of watching somebody play a game. It just because I'm not sure what you guys uh, get out of watching these YouTube videos but in my opinion it's kind of like hanging out with your friends and watching them play a game yeah <laughs> and you don't have to deal with their attitudes when they actually do get uh, a bad thing that happens to them in the game you can you can just <laughs> click away to another website and you don't have to listen to me ramble on anymore alright well we finally got that all set up so now they're just trying to build up the fences for our yaks and that again with the gameplay your yaks will stay confined to their pasture I mean we have a little square pasture here and our yaks haven't wandered out of it ever since they were brought to it so they're completely fine if you just want to leave them open and have them wandering around, but I think it makes it look rather nice to have a little meadow where they can actually, uh, you know, move around a little bit. And if, if we can actually get a military up, we can start work on some projects like building the gatehouse and the guard towers and possibly even a stable for our animals because I do think that the animals would like to come inside when it's cold and bundle together rather than staying out in the elements. Alright, well, let's see. Who is this sitting in the hall by themselves? Nest. Hmm. And I just realized we don't have any lighting <laughs> in our dining hall, which means our gnomes have been eating in the dark for quite a while now. Wow, that is unfortunate. Okay, well, let's go ahead and give them some light. Rotate this around. I do apologize if that rotation is a bit spastic for anybody, but unfortunately there's not really a way to slowly rotate it. It's just... 90 degrees <laughs> rotates in a full circle so that it is what it is but apart from some of the harsh mechanics of the game that I, I I still think this is one of my favorite games to play in terms of city planning or survival simulations no you don't get the first person aspect of it but you, you still get a lot of the uh, really harsh mechanics behind doing things and not really preparing properly. And it, in my opinion, it, it creates a really awesome experience. And right now we're just mining away some of this stone. That way we can actually get back to replacing some of these floors because it looks like... Oh no, all the but we are out of stone. I see that. So I think some of these haven't actually been replaced. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's been replaced. So we're just trying to get some more stone going over here. Again, leaving some supports because not leaving the supports is just a travesty in my opinion. And unfortunately, all of this is probably going to be dirt. So we might be moving down to the next little level here soon. But all right, we went ahead and set up our yak pasture. Time is moving pretty well. 
go ahead and speed it up to get things moving along a little bit faster. I really wish they would pick up some of these things. Oh, it's clay. That's the problem. Yeah, let's go ahead and set up another stockpile here. And we'll just make a clay stockpile. Clay? And we can go ahead and remove the designation for Gamble Dano because, well, he has been laid to rest. And his body is actually still there, surprisingly. <laughs> it hasn't decomposed yet. Or gone where all bodies go. In this game, anyway. I guess deleted for new data to come in. But I think it's a pretty fitting resting place. He has a nice grave marker, a nice statue to watch over him in the afterlife. But it seems our gnomes don't have the amount of wood that they need. Um, hmm. Seems to be some kind of issue here. With the amount of wood that we actually have. Oh, okay. It was because we actually set those up to be clipped and cut. So they had a lot of backlogged work that they needed to get done. So now they'll move on to the pine trees and start getting our supply of wood up again. That way we can actually start having our fence for our yaks. Sitting at 8,600 kingdom worth. That's not too shabby in my opinion. Um, we still have strawberry seeds that are sitting over here. Which is kind of annoying. Oh, that's because they don't have anywhere that they can go right now. So we'll probably be building some kind of uh, seed silo or seed warehouse where our gnomes can take the extra seeds. But for right now, we're just going to leave them on the farm plots because that's the best place for them, honestly. It creates the most effective way for them to plant more seeds. But that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope I'll see you in the next episode. From everybody here in Devil Dagger, y'all have a great one.